There are lots of different designs of multimeters, but they all work in essentially the same way. So some of them have an on-off button, like this one. Some of them don't have an on-off button. There's a part of the dial that is labeled off, and that, when your dial is on that setting, means that the meter is turned off. If you want a type of meter with an on-off button, you have to press the on button first. Make sure you turn it off afterwards. Some of them have auto power off, which saves battery. Some of them don't, and you don't want to waste your battery by leaving it on in a drawer somewhere. Now, all multimeters have a common hole labeled COM. And you can see here that there are all of these four different designs. So COM, 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 COM. The common hole is used for all functions that you're going to be using the multimeter for. So you're always going to have a wire connected to the common hole. And that would usually be zero volts potential or even a negative potential. But usually zero volts potential. So that goes on to the, the negative side of your circuit, if you like. But what about all the other holes? Because there's so many other holes on these meters. Well, let's just focus on this one meter to start with. It's a little bit more straightforward. The dial has to be set before you plug things in. The reason being, if you've got something plugged in here, as you move through a setting, you may actually inadvertently damage the fuse inside this meter. So make sure you set it first on the dial before you plug anything in. On the dial, you've got a few options. Over here, you can see there is 10ADC, 400MADC, 4000 micro ADC. Now, all three of those are ammeter settings. The 10 ADC has a maximum current passing through it of 10 amperes. Any more than that, and a little fuse inside this is going to blow, stopping you from using the instrument. Although this particular one, the fuse resets itself. But some of them, that's not the case. And your physics technician is going to get grumpy because they've got to replace the fuse. So that is a 10 amp DC maximum current on that setting there. Like that. Now some dials actually can go all the way around. This one can't, but some can. And if that's the case, look out for the notch on one side of this part that you turn. Take this example. You've got the notch at the top. As you rotate it around, this is not a symmetrical dial. That notch tells you what setting. So that is the 10A DC setting. So once you've got it on 10 amp DC, you have to choose which hole to plug into. Well, we're going to plug into our common hole, which is common to all functions. But then where do we plug our other wire? We plug that into the 10A hole. This says 10A DC. That is the 10A hole. It is fused at 10 amps, and there we have it. So these two flying leads here, you can now connect in series in a circuit to use this as an ammeter, a 10 amp maximum ammeter. But what if when you're using this, the current it shows on the screen is quite small? Well, if it's less than 400 milliamps DC, then you can improve the resolution of the instrument. First of all, you disconnect the 10 amp hole. It actually doesn't matter if the common hole wire stays in, but as long as these holes, any other holes are not filled with wires, then this is fine. You can now turn the dial. Switching on to that will change the resolution of our instrument. And this can now measure a maximum current of 400 milliamps DC. This hole is for 10 amps. This hole has a milliamp label next to it. So this is the milliamp hole. You can now connect these to your circuit in series and they will act like an ammeter with a maximum current of 400 milliamps DC. Now this model will beep at you if you try to put more current through that. Some of them don't, they just have a fuse that pops and then that's it. By the way, popping fuses is not a technical term. The fuse will blow and 
you will not be able to use this meter until a technician replaces the fuse and they will be grumpy. Perhaps 400 milliamp DC, you're still getting a tiny number on the screen. Well, you're going to want it to have an even smaller range of currents, so you have an even higher resolution instrument. That would be the 4000 microamp DC setting. Remember, you always unplug things before adjusting the setting and then plug things back in. It's just good practice to get into. That will now show microamps on the screen and we're good to go to measure anything up to 4,000 microamperes or 4 milliamps. If you try to measure a current higher than 4,000 microamps DC when it's on that setting, this model will bleep at you. Other models, the fuse will just go pop, not a technical term, and you'll have a grumpy technician. So that is how to use the three different ammeter settings here. Remember, the number is the maximum current, so you should always start high and work your way down. And when going from the 10 amp to the 400 milliamp, you will have to move the wire, but you'll be disconnecting it every time you change the setting anyway. Now, on this particular model, if you are measuring an AC current, the mean AC current for an AC supply is zero. So this will give you a root mean squared current as an average. A root mean squared current. So if you want AC, you press the select button. And this will now give you a root mean squared current. And you press the select button, it goes back to DC. And you can see the enunciator here change when I press that button. Just like that. So that's how you use this meter as an ammeter. What if I want to use it as a voltmeter? Well, I turn the dial to the VDC setting. That is now going to be a voltmeter. But which hole do I use? Well, this hole says 10A, 10 amperes, which corresponds to the 10A DC setting. The one that's got a V on it is this one. That there is your V hole. So you plug your wire into that hole. There we go. That is now a voltmeter, which you can connect in parallel with whichever component you're interested in the potential difference across. And this model will automatically scale the potential difference it gives you. Some models they will not, and I'll show you that in a moment. What if I wanted to use this meter as an ohm meter, a resistance meter? Well, in that case, we switch it across to ohms. The hole with an ohm on it is this hole. You plug it into that hole. And now you can connect any component directly across these terminals without requiring a power supply to measure its resistance. And again, it will automatically scale. And what if I want to use this to measure the frequency of a source? Maybe it's a frequency generator and it's not very precise on the dial. Switch it to Hertz. Here's the Hertz. So plug it into the Hertz. There we go. And this particular model is not very accurate at less than, I think it's about 20 or 30 Hertz. Um, it's not very good for that. So it's okay for higher frequencies, but not for lower frequencies. And that's pretty much every setting that you're going to want to use. If you want AC and it's got blue AC, you press select to select AC. There is also the setting that irritates teachers the most, which is this setting, to check to see whether a component is still working, essentially. What you do with that is you will connect into this hole here, and if there is a connection, then you will see it will give you a nice zero number. If not, it will say OL, so that's overload, it's over the scale. That is a reverse bias diode, for example. But if you press this button... It makes an annoying noise, which is very irritating. But it can tell you whether there is an electrical connection or not. Some multimeters have a hold button. So when you've got a number on the screen, but it's fluctuating a bit, you can press hold and it will hold that number still. And then you can press hold to allow it to change again. You can also manually select the range for some of these settings. And there are some other settings here as well that you can play with. You can't really break this by choosing the wrong setting. When you're finished with it, 
switch it off. So what about other meters? Well, this meter here has four holes. This looks even more complicated, but I assure you it is not. The common hole has always got something in it. So there we go. If you are using this on any of, uh, on the 10 amp setting, which is that setting there, or indeed that setting there for 10 amp AC, then you will have it, uh, the wire in the 10 amp hole like this. Plug this in series and it is an ammeter measuring up to 10 amperes. And you should always start with that. And make sure you're choosing DC if you're measuring 10 amps maximum using a DC supply. Then, if you're getting too small a number, less than 0 0.2 amperes, switch to 200 milliamperes. Now we need to use the milliamp hole instead. Then, if your number is smaller than, um, than 20 milliamps, you can unplug, switch it across to 20 milliamps, plug it back in again. But it will still go into the milliamp hole. The same for two milliamps. It will still go into the milliamp hole. You can see here's the annoying check the diode option. And that would go into this hole here. Because it's not a milliamp hole. In fact, all the other settings, ohms, hertz, or volts, go into this right-hand hole here. That's what it's labelled as. So what else have we got? Well, we've got this metre here. This metre here is exactly the same idea, except now the milliamp hole and the V-hole is the same hole, and the 10-amp hole DC is all the way over here. You want to measure a 10-amp DC current? You choose that. And this meter doesn't allow you to measure an AC current. It's no, there's no option for that on this meter. Again, this is the hold button. And you've always got something in the common hole. And if you're measuring something up to 10 amps, you plug it into the 10 amp hole. All other settings, whether it's milliamps, microamps, volts AC, volts DC, or even ohms, you would have it connected to the other hole, which has those labels. Make sure you switch it off when you are done. And this one is exactly the same. So we've got the common hole at the bottom this time, not in the middle, but it's labeled COM. It's very easy to follow. Then we've got the top one, which says 5A. So this has a maximum current across it of five amps, not 10 amps this time, but it's the same principle. You choose five amps, and then you plug into the five amp hole to measure currents up to five amperes, or the batteries are running low on this meter. If you want to measure smaller currents than 200 milliamps, switch it to the 200 milliamps when it is disconnected, and then connect to the milliamp hole. And then, of course, you've also got 20 milliamps, 2,000 microamps, 200 microamps, and your AC voltage, and DC voltage, and your ohm meter as well. This one doesn't have a frequency meter. But all of those settings are this middle hole, and that's why it has those labels. You'll notice that this meter and some other meters also have some more detail about the fuses, the maximum voltages and currents for these holes. You can ignore most of those for the normal lab setting in high school. As long as you've chosen the right hole, that you are not accidentally overloading the fuse that is in this meter.